I get, when say, uh, McEnroe said no vaccine, he saw all the problems. So I guess he went to Google and no vaccine, no vaccine, no vaccine. Boom! No vaccine, no vaccine, boom! Yeah. Mm -hmm. He was not thinking of fear, plus he was restraining himself from going too far back, which for grass is great, mm -hmm. because then you can accommodate better. But he still had a bad thing. He looked normal to me. Mm -hmm. That was the best coaching tip ever. Imagine a guy gives you a tip and then you went one below and then the surface says, not your own. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Good. Okay, so that's what I'm doing now. Restrain yourself from, a, from this. And at the last moment, you're going to do something. Don't even worry what you do, but restrain yourself from taking a bunch. You see how it's much better in solid? You were yeah, hitting? it's much yeah. better. And even awesome. the balls that were difficult, you were hitting them back. Yeah. And you're hitting harder, too. This is the problem. Yeah. That when you have a third ball, then you can do all... You can do too much. Your paraphernalia. <laughs> <laughs> And then you go around like this, you do the whole thing, you do too much. Yeah. I'm putting it, remember I said in the living room, I'm putting you, you know, with the lion right now. Yeah, right. So the only way you can do it. Yeah, yeah that's Because it's very right. uncomfortable, I guess. See, it's going like this, no vaccine, boom. Mm -hmm. And the ball goes in. You know what, you know, oh my God, I'm suffering, you know, why am I doing this? You know, boom, the ball goes in. Yeah. Can you see it? It's like, this is why I didn't want to warm up to warm up with Lucille this morning. Okay. Because okay. then right. you can roll your thing like this. So okay. right. what I did is I coached him and he had it beautiful, mm -hmm. but he was still look, doing a little bit of his own stuff that I noticed not from here. I noticed it from down there. He's going the circuit, going the circuit, mm -hmm. you know, like mm -hmm. that. See, I can tell from other parts something that is not necessary because you could have been there yawning and hitting the ball with me beautifully, but you were doing the one, two, three or the whatever. So you did with that. So I knew you were into your circuit. So now, yesterday was a way of showing you what is successful. Mm -hmm. So it kind of sinks in. So now, then you did with Lucille. You were hitting with Lucille, and you had these different things up here, little troubles here and there, from the circuitry, not from the new thing. So now, I'm putting it where you do it or you die. You got it? Yeah, I got it. Yeah, yeah, yeah. okay. Good. To get back, careful. No back swing. Ah, yeah. A lot of the conventional style was going around like this, right? The modern way is from the foot to the shoulder. It's really a vertical circle. It's not a horizontal circle. That's what we work with here. Remember the line, they start getting huge. Uh -huh. Yeah, getting under, even if the ball is far, you have this, you have this, you know, you get under, and then you can go like this if you want, backwards. But this is from here underneath, here. And then this is what you were asking before. You put your racket, you put it here. This is the ball, right? Here, go ahead. The modern movement is the hand on the ball, you know, and then the racket is coming underneath. When you get here, you can't go forward because you're going to, the ball is going to hit here. So you go like this, and then here you pull it like this, and look, it's easy. Go from here, boom, and the racket gets the whip effect right there because you go, your hand goes this way and this way, and the racket goes this way and this way. So look to me, you go in there, my hand is going straight, look. but the racket is going underneath, and then boom, feather. Yeah. Boom. Nadal does it this way. No, you're doing it. You don't know you're doing it. And yeah. you, don't, you don't just yeah. come across. You put your hand. Yeah, you come across. But you see. Like this. Nadal does it this way. <coughs> he gets the whip this way. Mm -hmm. You know, or he goes this way. Mm -hmm. Or sometimes here. <coughs> Further he goes this way. Yeah, it comes like this. Mm -hmm. Coming across. And then uh, Djokovic does it like perfect, like this and like this. That's why he looks so clean. Mm -hmm. So what happens is. I never specifically taught that.
because I found also no, because I wasn't that clear that it was so much web over there. But I taught the players to go here and around, right? Go at the ball and then just go around the ball. ball around. Good. So it's two things to that. When you go like this and come around, okay, but you're clearly tracking with your hand and you come around, you know, like this to meet it with the racket, okay? Then the hand moves this way, okay? Players are encouraged, even at the professional level, to go through the ball, so they lose that, and also to step in, at which point they lose that. By doing this and tell the players to come backward like this, to pull like a whip, okay? This is what happens. It takes away this following the ball, this stupid thing that keeps going around, everybody's talking about, follow the ball, then you come here. Okay, two things. If you go like this, and you want to come backwards, you have to command your body to do it early because there's a little delay between your intention and the muscle doing it. So you have to start a little bit earlier than, than touching the ball. Yeah, you pull like this. Like further, he starts coming across from here or here. You know, he doesn't start coming across here. He has to do it because he's following the ball with the hand and then he pulls. But the day he plays best, he pulls farther back, and the days he tries to steer a little bit, then the circle becomes bigger. And in a whip, if you don't go small, if you go like big, it's not it nice. doesn't crack. Yeah, exactly. So the a pull back with your weight, yeah. everything. Yeah. Just, just look you jump like out the ball, like further sometimes they jump, you jump out the ball here, and you go boom, and everything was forward, but the arm is going back. See, I had to remind Borg that. I had to remind Borg that his power was towards the back fence. You need to do more of it, but I would say get the idea that you are like, your arm is going down here, even if the ball is up here. And from here you go to the ball and come across. The high ball, you don't have need, you can put toss in there, so you go across, like this. But you start from here, from the foot to the shoulder, from the foot to the shoulder. That's going to eliminate this thing where you go here and the ball interferes. If you are here, just drop it to the foot. Let's see how that works for you. The voice is a little bit different. Okay. So anyway, oh, I forgot to say this, Jimmy. In your case, and in the case of the players in Spain or that, I taught them get to the ball, go to the shoulder. Mm -hmm. That's all I said, right? Mm -hmm. They found this pull by themselves, just like Safin found. Mm -hmm. Safin was taught in in. No Valencia in Alicante, mm -hmm. where I was there in 1973, mm -hmm. coaching the coaches over there. Okay. So Safi must have gotten a little bit of influence from there. Mm -hmm. And mm -hmm. he was doing Safi was going Chuk! like this. And he called it doing something with the wrist. The only way I could feel like I could get it is if I, I was like, the only way I think I could do this, coming at the ball right here, is if I pulled back, it would slide into the ball a little more, too. Every ball is different. You have to find your best. You hit the 100 balls, and then you find four or five balls that are unbelievable. Do more of it. Okay. But if I'm coaching, I'm exaggerating. I tell the player, hit. you get to the ball, look, Jimmy, uh -huh. blast it by going towards the back fence. Okay. That's all you need to really feel that. focus on. Yeah, let's not do it now because you want to That's okay. hit all of us. All right. But do it when you play with Spadia or with somebody. Oh. Or oh, don't somebody. hit any of these against him. Huh? Don't hit any of these type of shots against him. Well, it's going to go. The, it's going. You're going to have a hundred and ten mile an hour forehand. Can I swing slow and do it? Oh yeah, I will exaggerate.
back super fire just a little bit. Good. come across a lot, it'll do it, right? Okay. So leave your racket there. Good. Let's put your hands like this. Okay. So this is a flat stroke. There we go. Let me let me slide. Okay. Flat stroke. You feel the same in the top and in the bottom? Sure. Good. This is a topspin stroke. Where do you feel the ball? You know, like okay, where you go sliding? Where? In the top or in the bottom? In the bottom, it's kind of rolling, right? Right. It's up no slide. friction. Where is the friction? On the top. Good. And this is a slight spot. Good. Huh? Yeah. Okay. So, if you have the friction here, it's pushing the ball down. Right. With tossing, the friction is here, and here, if it rotates enough, could be a vacuum. But that's only achieved by Nadal, Villas, this huge tossing. They are vacuum. So, with this force here, see the ball will bounce like two thirds. With this force here, the ball is being pushed down and it bounces up. Practicing with Guillermo Villas, the ball was coming, say, eight feet from the ground here, you know, like five feet over the net. And so eight feet height here, and then it would kick 10 foot high. You cannot achieve it with a ball with some weight only. Mm -hmm. Sorry. Yeah. You only achieve it with this force here going down. Mm -hmm. In a slice, the friction is here, so the ball tends to go in one straight line. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. That's the secret. So I was telling him, the only enemy he has here is not you. Okay, the net is just a barrier. The enemy is gravity, pulling the ball down. So he has to hit up. And I said, if you pull up like this and you rotate the ball, gravity is his ally, mm -hmm. not his enemy. Mm -hmm. uh -huh. mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Yeah, and you know that good, we work on that, you know, mm -hmm. like that. And your game change huge. Yeah, where he now from being a very risky player, you become a very steady player at incredible power. You could blast the ball and it goes in, right? Mm -hmm. And that's how he was able to play with Spedia, for example, was a student of mine when he was a kid. And, and also in high school, he was also, mm -hmm. I coach him also. He was number 19 in the world, mm -hmm. you know? Fourth American. Good. So how could you play with them so well? And they like because playing with you. Time. Yeah, because the harder they hit it, the harder he goes and the harder he hits it, and the ball goes in. Mm -hmm. okay. So, that is the physical universe. It's the only secret in tennis, so you have to get under the ball, just roll it. That's why I said from the foot to the shoulder. Can you see how your arm feels more free now? Mm -hmm. to go, it doesn't get stuck over here, right? More of the same. Good, it went in, unbelievable. Good, 10 feet over there like that. Corresponds with the, the 
with the core, certain area of core. I'm gonna I'm gonna deck it and try one left beforehand. four chords, right, at Marco Polo Hotel. Uh -huh. So this guy was very, very cocky, you know, was the mayor of the city. And, and I have some friends. So, and then um, he said to me, oh, I could beat you. I said, Leah, come over, I could beat you left-handed. So we play left-handed, but I didn't say I can't play too hard. So we're running around, hitting here, and then some here, and then most here. And I beat him with six off. <laughs> so we had a big lunch because we had this really wealthy guy who was taking us to lunch, you know, big lunch like this. And he is saying, oh, let's play again. He said, I could beat you. Yeah, I could beat you. You know, left hand and all that, I could beat you this time. I said, oh, come on. I said, I can beat you with the strings in my racket. Yeah, I bet you lunch for everybody here. I said, I can beat you with a string in my right. So. What? <laughs> what? So, we go to the court, all these, you know, like 10 people watching, all friends, you know. And I go to the court fast, left fast. And I had an old Davis racket I was cracked with no strings. And I got a piece of plywood and just cut a little bit, you know, with the pattern <laughs> like this. And I nailed it, zing. <laughs> so whenever I play him, and I had to play everything, two hands. And one time I hit it from here, and that thing almost came off, and I went like this, and I pumped in the ground, <laughs> and got it down like this. I beat the guy 6-3. He never spoke again. <laughs> that was the story, beating some boy with a string. Wow. A piece of wood, but it was so heavy. Uh -huh. But I could return and land. The guy got nervous. <laughs> you know, they could return everything by running and killing. Wow.